Hey everybody, the topic of this lecture is confidence intervals. I'm going to go through this somewhat quickly, so use the pause button as needed. We're going to look at confidence interval for the mean, and we do research on samples in order to be able to say something about populations or entire groups of interest. What we really want to know is the mean for that entire group of interest, and all we have is a sample mean. The best estimate of an unknown population parameter is the sample statistic. And that's why, in fact, we have this course to make inferences based on observations, to take statistics or sample data and use them to be able to say something bigger, to make a conclusion referring to all elements in the population, even the ones that didn't get to be in the sample. The sample has that important job to do, to be a good representative for its population. If you ever had to take a guess at the mean of some entire population on a measure, a good starting point would be the sample mean if you had one. And you can make that starting point more useful by including a confidence interval. And I want to explain this through using an illustration. Going with a true story, I actually have an aquarium and I have platyfish and they are extremely sensitive to temperature. Not all platys are, but mine are. I don't know if they're just being dramatic or if they are reacting to fluctuation in temperature. They need the tank to be 78.0 degrees or they can experience distress and they could die. This picture here is one of my platy fish. His name's Tiny. Here he's hiding behind the filter, which is a sign of fish distress. And well, I have a heater and it's set to 78 degrees and I have a filter that circulates the water. However, I'm not convinced that all of the water in the tank is at 78 degrees. Because my fishies are not acting happy and healthy, is it because of the temperature issue? I'm wondering how well the heating system is working. What do I want? I really need all the water in there to be 78 degrees. Every drop of it. So I want to check on that. A uh, population is an entire group of interest, right? It doesn't have to be necessarily the population of like all people or all dinosaurs, but the entire group of interest. In this example, the population is all the drops of water in my aquarium. Just stop here real quick and be sure you do completely understand the research situation before we go on. If you don't, the explanation is not going to be helpful. The research question is, is the water in my aquarium the right temperature for my fish? The method, simple random sampling, randomly sample the temperature at 10 different spots in the aquarium, get those readings, see how hospitable I'm being to my fish. Alright, so I got 10 temperature measurements and now I have some data. These are the readings, we'll look at the SPSS output in a second. Overall, what's the temperature in this aquarium? If I had to guess, I'd start with my sample mean, I don't have any other basis. My sample mean was 78.09 degrees, that's the mean of those 10 scores there, which does sound really close to perfect, right? 78.09, it has to be 78, sounds good. And here's the output. I would just use a t-score table or just use SPSS like I did to get the 95% confidence interval, and those are the limits. For that confidence interval, 77.809 to 78.371. That kind of tells me how accurate or useful my sample mean is in estimating the population parameter. So between 77.8 and 78.4, something like that. The mean temperature in the aquarium is probably in that interval. And that sounds pretty small. It sounds like a tight confidence interval and this looks promising for the health of my fish. As you can imagine, a tighter confidence interval is great because it indicates that my sample did a good job estimating the population mean. And that's just the output for the confidence interval. You should just notice also that a confidence interval can be wide or tight or small. A tight confidence interval, like what I think I have here, it's really close to the 78, so that makes me feel good that the real temperature in that aquarium overall is close to 78. It could be really wide though. I mean, I could have a mean of 78.09, but the scores could be all over the place. I mean, I could have low 70s and 
high 90s and all sorts of things, they could still average 78, but I would end up with a really wide confidence interval, and that wouldn't be particularly reassuring when I need the water to be to 78 degrees. The width is affected by how spread out the scores are within each sample. Obviously, if the scores are spread out all over the place, uh, sample means not going to be a great estimate of the population mean. And the sample size also impacts the confidence interval. Bigger sample contains more of the population in it, so it's automatically a better estimate of the population mean. Taking huge samples is going to give sample means that are more like one another than if we just took small samples. Larger sample size means smaller sampling error, and we would get a smaller, tighter confidence interval. That should make sense. So the bottom line here, if my fish die, should I feel guilty for not keeping their aquarium at the right temperature? Based on this, I'd say no. The true mean temperature from anywhere in there is probably between 77.8 and 78.4, which is pretty close to that desired 78.0 degrees. I'm thinking maybe Tiny's a little depressed because his climate control is actually working fine. You should do the reading about confidence intervals in the textbook and ask questions in class. Also, if you have any uplifting messages or cards you'd like me to pass along to Tiny, send them by email. I'm serious about the little guy, by the way.